What is going on guys, Grave here. Of course today we got update 3.1 for Battlefield 2042. This will be the last update for the next few weeks. Uh, DICE and EA are going kind of to do their holiday thing now, so they're going to be off work for a little bit. So we're not going to have any more updates until the start of next year, so January or February of 2022. I will link these patch notes down in the description below if you would like to read over them for yourself. Some pretty good stuff in this. One of the main things is some fixes to how bullet hit registration works. But let's go ahead and hop right into it. First of all, players that are not the party leader can now cancel while waiting in a queue. Xbox crossplay can now be enabled and disabled in the Xbox uh, game menu. So that was a thing I know that wasn't available to Xbox players. Of course, we did have that here on PS5, but you can now disable crossplay in the Xbox menu. Your short settings will now correctly be remembered when refreshing the Battlefield Portal server browser. Fix an issue where loadouts would sometimes be empty on the spawn screen after joining a server, preventing weapon selection. I have had this every day that I have played at least two or three games, so I'm really glad to see that that has been fixed. Made improvements to ensure aim is more consistent during console gameplay. Also, Ranger's effective combat range and overall health has been decreased. Now. I'm not sure why they said the aim assist is more consistent during console gameplay. I'm, I'm guessing this is going to kind of help with that. Uh, well, well, I guess the way a lot of people say there's no console aim assist at all, where it's kind of non, you know, existent, even though we do have settings for it. It feels like sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So hopefully the aim assist will be more like what we have seen in past Battlefield titles. Now, Battlefield's aim assist on console has not ever been really strong. But in this game, it seems like it's just kind of odd. I'm not sure if it's because of the aim assist bug or if it's because we have so many different controller settings with axle dead zones and things of that nature that it's making it a little bit harder for them to get the aim assist to work correctly with all these different features. Anyway, some audio fixes. They made various tweaks to overall audio experience and they also fixed an issue where soldiers would not always play indoor specific footsteps. For weapons that remove the bounce from the underbarrel grenades, the 40mm AP grenade now properly damages vehicles. They fixed some weapons displaying wrong ammo counts. The DXR1 and the NTW50 bolt action rifle reload animations increased by 0.2 seconds. They ad adjusted the dispersion values of most weapons, which results in faster uh, dispersion decrease when a tap firing or doing short burst. Also adjusted dispersion increase from most weapons. It now takes slightly longer for weapons to become overly inaccurate. Also, they adjusted the recoil, uh, recoil values to prevent overall aggressive recoil jumps for the AK-24, the LCMG, the PKBP, uh, the PKPBP, the SFAR, and the PP-29. Uh, improved the hip fire accuracy of all SMGs to make them better stand out from the automatic weapon archetypes. Uh, also, LG, L, LMG dispersion and recoil lowered to improve performance in sustained fire or in sustained fire. Also additional improvements to recoil for all weapons, uh, more specifically for the automatic weapons. They increased the close range damage and consistency of the MCS 880 with buckshot shells. Also they fixed a bug that caused bullets to be fired below the player's aim for the SFARM GL and the K30. They fixed uh, some vehicle bugs where vehicles sometimes do not deal blast damage on a direct hit. Uh, they're reducing the ground vehicle 30 millimeter cannon effectiveness uh, versus infantry. If it now, it now will overheat faster and has a slightly reduced rate of fire. So the rate of fire goes from 350 to 330. The heat per bullet is 0 0.13 to 0 0.14. The heat drop per second is 0 0.5. Now that will be 0 0.475. And the blast damage was 20. That will now be 18. They also uh, lowered the blast damage on the hovercraft from 55 to 35 uh, for the grenade launcher. This is going to kind of finally, I think, get the hovercraft in line with some of the other vehicles. It was very, very strong when the game first came out. So hopefully they're not going to make it too weak, but at the same time, you don't want it to be too crazy either. The 40 millimeter utility pod upwards firing angle is now easier to use. And for the Wildcat, they removed the dispersion. The ammo went from 12 to 8. The impact damage from 85 to 75. And the blast damage from 70 to 35. So that might help with that Wildcat being a little strong as well. When it comes to gadgets, they increase the time to detonate a frag grenade to 1.4 seconds. They also increase the damage of frag grenades across game modes to deal 120 damage uh, to players. Also, they reduced a frag uh, or get a guaranteed kill on an armored player too is what it's trying to say about the frag grenades. Excuse me, I worded that wrong. So it's 120 damage and a guaranteed 
kill an armored player. So that kind of increased that damage for those armor players. A lot of people use armor, of course, in multiplayer. Uh, they reduced the frag and incendiary grenade max ammo count from 2 to 1. Uh, they lowered the spotting uh, spotting radius of the proximity sensor from 30 to 20 meters. They lowered the uptime from 30 seconds to 14 seconds. And they lowered the amount of proximity sensors a player can carry and deploy from 2 to 1. It's pretty much proximity uh, sensor spam in all game modes because they are that good. I still think they will be good, but of course now you'll see a lot less spam on the field. They made a few adjustments to hazard zone and break for, uh, breakthrough, just some small adjustments. They also improvements on backpedaling and objects when being in a prone position. And also they fixed a rare issue where players could turn invisible when spawning on a fully destroyed vehicle. And that is pretty much it, guys, for the last update for this year. I'm sure we'll start getting updates again pretty soon. As soon as, you know, 2022 starts, soon as the new year's over, I think we'll, uh, Dice and EA will be back to doing probably weekly or every other week updates for Battlefield 2042 until they get everything tuned just right. But anyway, leave me a comment with your thoughts. And of course, if you like the video, hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. Be sure to check out everything down in the description, and I'll catch you all next time. Peace.